Hello and welcome to episode 47 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we are talking about that IBM's recent purchase of Red Hat now makes them the leader in hybrid cloud computing. Hi, Dave. It's exciting to have you on another C-Suite show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here, and this is kind of a great topic. I've been hearing a ton about this week, both from the press and from the clients. Yeah, absolutely. It's been all over Twitter, and it's really been, uh, yeah, it's been big news. Big news. I think uh, $34 billion uh, uh, IBM paid for Red Hat, and I think it's all going to complete at the sort of tail end of uh, 2019. So, yeah, very, very interesting. Very interesting. So we've got a nice question to open for the show then, Dave. Will this, uh, you know, this type of mega deal continue, or do you see that Uber deals are all done now? What are your thoughts on that? I think they're going to continue. It's going to be deals around desperation. Uh, not that I think IBM or Red Hat was desperate, but I think that uh, other organizations, enterprise-class computing, big iron guys, uh, are going to go into 2019 and 2020, you know, really kind of figuring out how they're going to get more traction in the market and acquisitions kind of buy them time. So it's difficult for any large company who deals with technology to build net new technology and kind of get on the creative and innovative train. And it's not really their fault. They have a base of install and they have certain customers that they have to adhere to and certain market conditions they have to live up to. And so in the world of cloud, where everything is moving, moving at the speed of, uh, you know, the speed of need, people are just, you know, moving as quickly as they can. And innovation is kind of leading the day. And it doesn't really matter what size you are. And mid-sized companies seem to be kind of in the sweet spot for growing this technology. The ability to um, buy these companies and take them out of the market is what we're going to see in the next couple of years. So this is going to be one of many. And, you know, we're going to wake up and be surprised where, you know, large cloud providers that we thought, you know, would um, you know, be cloud providers forever, specifically some of the bigger SaaS providers out there are going to end up buying each other and merging the company. And the reality is they see Amazon and they see um, Microsoft as a big threat in the space and their need to figure out a way to build their, uh, to build their, market, uh, their market share. And it's tough to go out there and basically build it through organic um, growth and, and trying to get the uh, shareholder expectations to make sure they're growing the right way. And so acquisitions are the only way to do it. And it can cause you know, great advantages for the company, um, but it's also a way to kind of uh, kick the can down the road in terms of your ability to kind of play in a market you haven't been able to play in yet or play in as well as some of the other bigger guys. Yeah, true. So, I mean, you know, IBM are going to benefit from the open source platform of Red Hat, but essentially, you know, where's the compromise there? Where's the compromise from a Red Hat user or IBM user? Where do you, where do you see that sitting? Uh, it's probably a discussion that's going on right now with, you know, with IBM and Red Hat. Um, so the compromise is going to be their ability to light each other's cust uh, uh, customers with the fact that this technology is going to be added on. So IBM brings you know, a great uh, degree of enterprise knowledge. You know, they've, they've been dominated the mainframe world for years and the legacy technology is, you know, typically gonna have an IBM brand or an IBM clone brand on it uh, going forward. So they've done a tremendous job in terms of building enterprise in, enterprises uh, up in the right direction. Red Hat's kind of, uh, you know, very cool, hip, trendy, uh, open source company um, that's getting into a space where everybody else is cool, hip and trendy. Uh, going forward. And so they're going to have to figure out a way to sell in a market that's going to be more crowded with different disruptors in the space and different cloud providers and making, making things happen. I'm, I thought the Red Hat products I've leveraged in the past have been tremendous. They've worked well. Open source technology is great. And it's really a matter of them bringing that into the IBM culture and kind of getting a one plus one equals three kind of scenario. And the, the trouble is going to be really around the customer base and the market's acceptance of the ability to kind of grab these things up. And so I think the market's going to, um, uh, you know, probably have a question mark around where these things are going and how they're going to be adopted in the space. Uh, you know, hearing other people in the other enterprises that are, you know, moving forward with this, this technology or have it as part of the portfolio, the, the questions start to come up. And They'll be answered within the next two years. My big, you know, advice to them is don't panic. It takes a long time for these things to get together and for anything to change. 
but mm -hmm. they have legitimate questions. If I'm an IBM customer, you know, what am I investing in? If I'm a Red Hat customer, what am I investing in? Mm -hmm. And if I'm, and by the way, if I'm not a customer of either, you know, should I invest in this technology as net new? That's something, something cool that I can integrate within my current solutions. So this is an exciting thing. I like the fact that change is coming, but it introduces lots of questions in terms of, um, you know, where the technology go, goes. This is going to be a, a trend. I mean, we're going to see these Uber deals um, going forward, and I'm going to hear about them just like I heard about the deals this week. My phone's going to start to ring at the press, you know, looking for quotes in the space. And I think that the reality is, is that there, if you're going to answer the question correctly, that no one really knows, you know, other than in pure speculation in terms of whether the deal is going to work or not. That'll take a two-year time period to figure out how they merge together and where they're able to create value within the space. Um, so we're going to see deals that uh, in the next couple of years that 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 will uh, dwarf this one. You know, in other words, they're going to be, you know, many billions of dollars, hundreds of billion dollar deals, and some big publicly traded companies that we thought would never. Uh, go away, then end up going away and be combined with other things. Uh, and just because they're reacting to the cloud, the cloud is changing everything, changing the investment of technology. And quite frankly, where some of these enterprises were pushing back on cloud a few years ago, now have adopted cloud, they realize it's probably too late for them to have an impact in the market. They're extremely uh, scared and paranoid, and they should be. And their ability to kind of lash out and buy companies is really going to be the reaction going forward. They're making big moves to satisfy their investors. Yeah, truly, truly. And, and it really does uh, put a lot of threat into the market, doesn't it? Where, where, where uh, people are almost pushed out or outmaneuvered when it comes to a merger like this or an acquisition like this. And it's interesting you say, uh, you know, a client that's investing heavily into, say, IBM, how does this acquisition with Red Hat benefit them or what the benefit what's the the overall long-term benefit going to be what do you talk to what do you talk to your client about how do you explain that i mean what can you do to explain the, the benefits of of uh, the acquisition of red hat well in other words do you look at what what's relevant to to you i mean if you're not using ibm or red hat technology uh as part of your stack then this really has really nothing to do with you and it's you're going to you know be able to remain on the sidelines and see what goes on and then invest where you can invest. As far as some technology that's coming out of this, it's going to be, uh, you know, creative innovation market changing. Uh, that typically never happens, but it could happen in this case, but you can wait and see what comes out and whether or not to buy it or not. If you're a client with any of these, these folks, then you have to ask the questions to the organizations as to what the roadmap is in the future of this technology. Um, one of the things that, um, uh, people, enterprises have a tendency of doing is kind of reacting kind of in a knee-jerk way. And I'm certainly, we're going to have people who are, you know, part of the open source cloud, which is kind of religion unto itself. That'll be, you know, screaming bloody murder. And people that are leveraging IBM is really kind of religion unto itself will probably be confused. And outvoting the technology or changing the direction of your roadmap and things like that, and reaction to these sorts of deals is typically ill-advised because it almost never occurs at a speed you think it's going to occur. And the reality is there's really not as much impact to you. And by the way, all these companies that end up merging together and make these huge acquisitions, they're, they're not dumb. They're going to figure out a way to retain their customers and make sure their customers are going to be happy. As long as they're communicating, you know, that seems to be where people fumble. Um, then that's going to happen. If they fail to communicate, then people are going to get just enchanted. So unfortunately, this is one of the answers that people don't want to hear, it's going to be wait and see uh, as to whether it's going to impact you or not. But it's not relevant to you at all. I wouldn't even, you know, give it a second thought. Just go ahead and buy your business and continue on to the technology stack you currently have. Yeah, so true. And, and I mean, you know, a, a final question maybe before we go on to your, your top three tips. But in your opinion, you know, what, what do you see as the number one benefit of this acquisition for IBM and, and, and Red Hat joining forces? Well, I think Red Hat has some great stuff. I think they'll benefit from the ability to, to sell the technology through additional channels with IBM. And IBM is really good at selling technology. They have been for years. Uh, so the ability to have other things in their, uh, in their portfolios that they can sell integrated with the uh, IBM stuff is going to be a step in the right direction. It's going to augment some of the cloud computing capabilities that IBM has been missing. Um, the, uh, uh, Cloud-based stuff that Red Hat sales is first rate. People use it all the time. They're very happy with it. I have no issues with it at all. It's just very tough for them to make any kind of traction where everything 
in the world is AWS, Google, and Microsoft, and Alibaba to be uh, throw that in there as well. And then you have all the other, you know, second tier players, Red Hat, IBM, Oracle, uh, that uh, are trying to figure out their play in the market. And I think that's going to be the toughest thing to do. But they have to, I think, in essence, join forces to, you know, figure out how to take this up to the next level. IBM has the resources, the ability to market, the ability to to sell. Red Hat has the innovation stuff. They have a very good stack of technology, and perhaps this will be a case where. The Red Hat technology is sold by the IBM folks, and they're able to, in essence, turn this into something that's additive and valuable. So maybe everybody benefits from this, including the customers. Um, but they could screw it up. You know, it's it's who knows. It could be one big screw up, one expensive screw up, couldn't it? And, and look, you know, Twitter is full of it at the moment. I mean, oh my goodness me, streams and streams and streams of. You know, this stuff going on, it's, it's fascinating to watch. And we should get this video up there and get people commenting on it. And, uh, you know, it'd be great to sort of uh, get this out there. What do you think? Yeah, I, I'd love to everybody to chime in on it because, you know, my, you know, wait and see advice is something people don't want to hear. They, they want me to, you know, go one way or the other. But the reality is I, I don't think it pays to overreact to this stuff. It's, you know, just go ahead and wait to see what happens. Very true, very true. And again, that moves us on nicely to your top three tips, Dave. So uh, it'd be great if you could share those, please. Yeah, number one, when these big Uber deals come around, understand what's relevant to you. <laughs> I say, I don't know how many calls I get from people that will um, be very excited about some sort of acquisition that occurred, and there's a ton of them that occurred in the past. And of course, my, my first question is, do you have any of this technology inside your data center? And if the answer is no, then go about your business. Don't worry about it. You're spending time worrying about something has no impact on you. It's, it's, um, and so, and you don't know exactly how it's going to play out. So, you know, don't start um, doing the knee jerk stuff. We have a tendency to get overly excited. We do get on Twitter and some of the social media stuff. People are very much religious around the open source stuff. And I can, you know, I've been to lots of those conferences and spoke at lots of those conferences in the past. And, you know, truly is some very motivated um, individuals that are very dedicated to the open source model. And so kind of mixing this with the IBM stack, things like that could be a little troublesome for them. But it really doesn't matter uh, unless this is part of what you're doing. And so, you know, I, my my word is just keep on moving. And if you have, you know, very little of it in your stack, then it's do, you know, worry about it very little. If you have a lot of it in your stack, then worry about it a lot. But wait to see what happens and wait to see how it's communicated to you before you do something that's uh, that's ill-advised. Uh, understand the pricing impact. Um, one of the things that uh, would concern me about this is there are additional costs that come upon the stacks. In other words, if you're a big user, in, I'm going to do that again. If you're a big user in any technology that's part of a, um, uh, you know, that's that's part of your stack, um, just understand how this is going to impact the pricing. And my big concern would be that. They're going to consider something which is vital to your company as a cash cow and start up, upgrading the, you know, up upping the price with not necessarily upping the value of the technology, the capabilities of the technology, and in essence trying to sunset something. And so, make sure you put that on your radar screen as something you're going to check in on a lot if this is occurring. Then understand the technology impact. And so, you know, if these things do go away and change, then you have to write a plan as to what you can do to egress you know, to um, egress out of the technology at some point, move into other technologies. And, you know, these are things you should think about anyway when you move to any kind of technology. But I would be very serious about understanding the threats, uh, the risk opportunities and threats that occur around this stuff and make sure that you have a plan in your back pocket, you know, as to what to do if some of your products are pulled out of the product stack or they're misaligned somehow, not really looking at this deal specifically, but deals in general. Uh, and making sure you're planning to protect yourself and not necessarily, um, you know, doing this in kind of a reactionary kind of way. Uh, so these things, like I said, they won't change overnight. It's going to take about two years before you start seeing the impact. But if the impact is negative to you, make sure that you're ready to move in a certain direction. You've had that planned out. You're able to explain it to people. Investors understand. Employees understand. Customers understand. And you're going to be successful if you do that. If you start moving and say, oh yeah, we better do this now, that's not that's typically gonna to be too late to have an impact and be, be able to solve your problems. Great top tips, very good, very good. Thank you, David, I appreciate that. And thanks for being part of the C-Suite show this week. It's always a pleasure. Excellent, and thanks for watching everyone. We really hope you enjoyed 
uh, us talking about the uh, the big deal that's been going on with IBM and Red Hat. Please feel free, as uh, Dave said, to chime in uh, in the comments box below and, and also on Twitter when we get this out and distribute it. So uh, thanks for watching. Remember, David's on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. Uh, I am also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, obviously. And if you're going to subscribe to the channel, make sure that you click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. And again, thanks for watching. Till next week.